Hey, welcome. I'm Florian. And I need to press elsewhere. There we go. Hi, I'm Florian. Uh, the internet knows me as Flokli. Um, apart from uh, doing Nix packaging all day, uh, I'm interested in build pipelines, infrastructure, low-level user space stuff, networking, and tinkering with hardware in general. Um, at work, I work as a site reliability engineer at Tweak. Uh, by the way, they are hiring, so if you're interested in that, just reach out. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, untrusted CI and how to use post build hooks to get automatic caching of untrusted builds. I'll be talking about CI in general, um, what you want a CI to do and how you want it to behave, uh, about Nix binary caches in general, how to use uh, private caches and uh, how to handle signature of those uh, builds in the private caches, um, how to handle limitations in simple implementations, uh, proposed solution, how this improves things in general, and uh, future ideas on what to do with it. So how do we want the CI to behave? Well, it should, in general, it should lint, it should analyze, it should build, it should test and package your project. Um, it should do that on each commit to assist developers in their workflow uh, while they are iterating over a PR. So especially you want it to run on PRs uh, to discover all breakages before they reach master or most of the breakages before they reach master. Um, but most importantly, you want your CI to be fast. So if you're waiting for like 30 minutes or an hour to get your tests to pass or not to pass and you're basically blocked on spending uh, your time on this, you, uh, yeah, that's just a huge problem and massively decreases uh, developer productivity. productivity. So, um, yeah, with a small project, that's not so much a problem, but uh, as projects grow, and uh, yeah, build time likely does as well. So having, still having a snappy CI becomes more and more challenging. And uh, yeah, when using Nix to provide those dependencies, uh, or like build the entire project, you can make use of binary caches. Um, in fact, we do already most of the time. There's cache nix source org for all the packages and nix packages built by Hydra, um, except unfree and packages currently failing, but that's another story. Um, however, in your project, there might also be other um, packages not generically suitable for nix, pa nix packages because they are domain specific stuff. They are custom overrides on non free packages, um, and you still want to cache those in your CI pipeline. So, um, what you then do most of the time is uh, you might have an Hydra or whatever does your build, but in general, uh, you go with a private cache of some sort that is added on your developer machines and uh, uh, they can make use of this cache in of some sort. It's either self-hosted or based on some bucket in some cloud or entirely managed. So I'm gonna be talking about how to set up those caches quickly. Um, what you do is you generate a uh, signing key, signing key pair on one machine. On all machines that use this cache, you configure your um, Nixos configuration or your Nixconf to uh, point to uh, those endpoints, to the public endpoints to download the binaries from. And you add the public key part of the signing key pair. And to upload, you use some sort of Nix copy command eventually or you expose your entire Nix store of some machine uh, uh, and, uh, to the others. And uh, in general, Nix copy supports like SSHNG to copy to another machine, HTTPS, uh, like a HTTP put to upload stuff, S3 buckets, and there's a in-progress PR to push to GCS buckets as well. Yeah, so assuming your project um, has a default Nix and a dependency attribute, containing all the dependencies of your project, you might end up with doing something like this. Oh, I should probably not move the mouse. <laughs> yeah, you, you somehow get a list of all the dependencies and all the Nix store paths that are part of your build, 
of your dependencies of your build or of your entire project, and then you, you issue a Nix copy command if you don't expose the, the Nix, uh, the Nix uh, store. Um, yeah, so what are the limitations of this naive approach? It might work in a lot of cases, but uh, sometimes there's some drawbacks. Like, uh, you might not have all the build dependencies readily available at a central location. So, uh, so you can't call nix build dash a and some magic attribute because there's scripts invoking nix by themselves. Uh, you have some shell scripts calling, uh, like calling nix shell, or you have Bazel shelling out to nix build to build other packages. So you might you have IFD and don't really know at first what you're gonna be end up building with. Um, yeah, and man, you can of course you can track those manually in your .nix file and make sure that you cache everything. Uh, that you that you basically catch catch all the packages you want to build and make sure you say I builds it and then you start the actual build process. But that's all like quite laborious and it gets even harder. Yeah, it doesn't get better. Um, another problem is that if one of those packages uh, fails to build. Um, the approach of waiting for the output path and then copying over the whole transitive closure um, will just uh, just won't kick in it, because it never got a chance to upload this intermediate uh, dependencies if you have not specified them before. So uh, yeah, you might end up bumping a, low, uh, a higher level thing. It fails to build, and uh, all this, those other dependencies you also need to rebuild for some reason. They just don't end up in the cache because you never reach to the endpoint of of actually building the, 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 the package, the, like the leaf package in your dependency. Um, another problem is that the upload is another manual step in your CI pipeline. Um, very likely you end up with code uh, dealing with all the signing and uh, uploading part inside your CI code itself that should in theory only say like, I'd like to build this thing and then it should be cached. You don't really want to mess with, with looking what you want to upload and then manual calling to upload it. It's just just normally it should just work and it uh, shouldn't increase your pipeline code. And another problem, which I personally find, uh, find a bit of a bigger problem, like as the binary cache is added and used as a substitute on all developer machines or probably even production machines, having wide access to it and having developers or like external contributors being able to, 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 to change this way of the, your scripting inside your CI pipeline. Um, it's very easy to extract this signing key. And uh, you don't want, uh, you basically don't want to have a backdoor and want to have somehow a way to pollute the cache in some sorts. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's all not so nice. And while, while one and two might just decrease cache hit misses, and three might be just annoying, like three and four together, Due to the reasons mentioned, uh, basically requires some sort of approval process for PRs, at least for external PRs. Um, yes, and that's all not very nice and negatively p impacting both cache hit rate and thus around trip time for developers. So how do we solve this? Um, there's uh, one way to solve it that I'm going to propose. It's uh, with together with multi-user Nix and some recently introduced Nix feature, you can uh, basically fix this. Um, yeah, you uh, basically, what you do is you have a CI user that, that runs your regular build process. It uploads a build recipe to a privileged Nix daemon. Oh, those animations work, nice. <laughs> um, and this uh, Nix daemon, yeah, is uh, basically instructing all the builds to happen on some temporary, unprivileged, other sandboxed uh, build users. Um, and afterwards, it takes care of persisting it to the local Nix store. And assuming you have no local user privilege escalation on that machine or some weird hash collisions, this effectively prevents, prevents regular CI users from manipulating the local Nix store. Like in a non-multi-user Nix installation, basically all those three different concerns uh, would, be running, uh, would be running as the same user. So the regular CI user could, in, in practice, like modify the next door in some weird ways, in some cases. So, yeah. Multi-user Nix in that case solves a lot of those uh, concerns and uh, isolates uh, this.
it's it's a default on NixOS, but but it's it's not the default on a lot of the hosted CIs. Like if you have Travis or Jenkins, and you have your like your Docker-based uh, um, CI, and it's and basically there, there's like a shell script that you call to to install Nix, and then you end up with a single user in Nix installation. Yeah, yeah, I, I will. No, no, no. It's it's one way to configure Nix in a certain case, and um, yeah. Okay. So with that, we kind of solved the direct access to the Nix store, but we did not yet solve the um, signing part. So uh, if we go with the bash loop approach we saw previously, um, we still end up signing inside the context of the CI user. So the CI user can still like change stuff before uploading to the remote cache. And that's something we don't want to do. Uh, because this way, the user can still extract the signing key, and if he has some way to access the uh, the S3 bucket or something, uh, he could he could modify stuff, resign, and and basically get code execution on other machines. So yeah, we don't want to do this. Uh, as I said, with uh, Nix uh, 2.3, there's a way around. You can uh, configure a post build hook which basically gets triggered for each realized derivation, even the intermediate ones. And in multi-user Nix, it's run as an, in the context of the Nix daemon. So as a privileged user, and uh, you don't have uh, the problem with exposing the key to, to the CI user. And instead, it's run as maybe as the root user. Yeah. Um, there's some side notes regarding this. Like normally, you don't want to exit Nix copy there because it's blocking. You want basically you want to queue the upload to happen uh, to some other process, uh, so you don't block the main the main build uh, build process. So let's look back at our limitations that I spoke about. The CI user doesn't have any direct access to the local Nix store anymore, and doesn't have access to the signing key. So there's no way to produce a modified signed artifact under the original store path which effectively uh, fixes number four. Uh, as I said, like in some cloud environments, users might still be able to alter files in the cache because it's just like a cloud setting that this machine is allowed to access this bucket. Um, but as it cannot access the signatures, uh, substitution won't happen because Nix will verify the signature. It will realize, hey, it's, it's the wrong signature. It won't substitute from there, and it might fall back to build locally. Um, by moving and uh, and uh, by moving the uploading logic away from the CI pipeline into the generic post build uh, hook in a multi user Nix configuration, we also fix three because we don't need to have any manual scripts inside uh, our CI process, and because the post build hook is triggered on each derivation realized in Nix store, no matter how we end up building this, we also solve two and one. Yes, so uh, we don't need to manually maintain another list of dependencies. We just catch all intermediate builds. So as I said, like a buff architecture will automatically upload all builds happening on a certain machine into the binary cache and can be entirely described in the uh, CI build uh, slave image that you run on your cloud provider maybe without the need for any cache-related configuration in the build pipeline itself. That means it's currently most suitable when you provide your own self-hosted builders because multi-user Nix requires multiple users and setting those up outside the repo and not inside of some of those. Uh, setting those up outside the repo but most of the time means like you can't use a lot of the hosted CI solutions that like have used some sort of shared runners because there's just no way to, to set up other users there. It's, it's, it's just often not possible. Um, but depending on your threat model, uh, you could still start using post build hooks in a single user Nix setting, which will at least solve uh, one uh, limitation one, two, and three. Yeah, that's what I already spoke about. Yeah, another problem is that running Nix inside Docker requires privileged containers uh, because of some of the sandboxing features not currently working. Um, and failing, so it might be unsuitable for some container platforms. Uh, another problem is that the official uh, 
Nixos Nix Docker image doesn't provide a multi-user installation, but it's based on Alpine and the shell script installing Nix. Um, yeah, but as I said, depending on the platform you're running on, you could you could uh, go with multi-user Docker containers, privileged ones as well. Yeah. So TLDR, use post build hooks to upload to the cache instead of other hacks. Um, future plans. So when uh, new machines are spinned up in off Borg, they often hit another node in the next off Borg run, and you have to wait again for dependencies to be compiled. So one way to fix this might be to have off Borg use not the official cache Nixos org bucket, but another bucket that all the builders share. And we could still not worry about having to pay too much money for it because we could just nuke it. Nobody's really relying on it and we can rebuild it. So either by garbage collecting or throwing it away completely in like some weeks, for, for all some weeks. What I'd also like to see is nicer tooling in general and documentation on how to use it. Um, uh, a daemon to handle the asynchronous uploads. Uh, there's a Nix copy uh, uh, PR to upload to, to support GCS. Uh, that would also help in some cloud environments, but it's not strictly related to post-build. Um, yeah, and as I said, more uh, more documentation in general and how to integrate this with CIs. So uh, maybe some, some Nixos module describing on how to wire this all together for your own self-hosted machines. Have some code ready that I would like to open source, uh, it's, but it's really not so much, not so, not, not so much code, not, not so much code. And also maybe a GitHub action template I mean, you, with GitHub Actions, as far as I know, you cannot have multiple users, but you could at least uh, get uh, like the single user part uh, set up with, with post build hooks. Yeah, and some blog posts describing this in a more readable fashion than a slide. That's from my side. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions? Have you looked into implementing a post-build hook script that can upload the source tarballs and the patch files that were used to do the build to a content address tarball cache? No, but it's an interesting experimentation field. When the build hook fails, of the, uh, the post-build post hook uh, fails, does your build fail? I don't know, to be honest. Okay. And uh, logs of the build hook, will they be, will they kind of, um, say if I run this from Hydra, um, where are the logs, o the logs of this uh, um, hook uh, go to? Will they end up in the, the, the log of the, of the build? Or the, are they? I think it's the next daemon logging it. Um, can you get the mic? I get my mic. Or like this. Um, yeah. Uh, the hook's output always goes to the user's terminal. If the hook fails, the build succeeds, but no further builds execute. Uh, and the hook executes synchronously and blocks other builds from progressing while it runs. You mentioned possibly doing garbage collection of the S3 buckets. Does such a function actually exist with Nix collect garbage or a tool to garbage collect the buckets? I think there's a Perl script which is a bit old, but I don't think we're actually running it on cache Nixos org. And we could, we could dog food uh, <laughs> this script on on the off Borg uh, bucket. All right, so if there's any more questions, feel free to uh, yeah, hit me after the talk. Thanks. Thank you, Florian. <laughs>